Now, for a long time, we have believed that type 2 diabetes is a long term irreversible condition. Not so, says a top NHS GP, Dr. David Unwin, who is leading a growing army of doctors helping their patients to reverse diabetes through diet. Uh, a brilliant story in today's Daily Mail newspaper ahead of a new series by Dr. David Unwin on how to lose weight and reverse your type 2 diabetes. Dr. Unwin joins me now. Hello, sir. Hello, Mark. Hello. So the biggest surprise is that actually type 2 diabetes is not necessarily a life sentence and there is hope that you can reverse the damage. That's exactly what we've been doing in, in my practice. Although I have to be honest and say I used to think of it as something of a life sentence and it's so wonderful to discover that I can help patients put their diabetes into remission. The idea is that you can control your type 2 diabetes without drugs and be healthy at the same time. Well, indeed, if you explain the current approach of, of, of a lot of doctors, which is, is to give medication for the management of type 2 diabetes, how does that work? What is the orthodox way? I think the orthodox way, or the way I used to do it for many years, is just give my patients medication to help them control their blood glucose. Because we know that for diabetes, the longer you have a high blood sugar, the more damage that does. But what I had completely missed is that another completely alternative way to look at controlling your blood sugar is to eat less sugar. Uh, the, Go figure. The thing and, and, and then, of course, these foods with your brilliant uh, illustrative food charts. It's not just sugar that turns to glucose in our blood, but a lot of things that we don't consider sweet, such as. Well, it's exactly it's starchy carbs. I had missed this completely. Starchy carbs like potatoes, um, like breakfast cereals, like bread. Uh, they break down into surprising amounts of of sugar. So a quick example. Um, 150 grams of boiled rice, 150 grams of boiled rice will affect your blood sugar to a similar extent as 10 teaspoons of sugar. So maybe boiled rice isn't such a good idea if you have type 2 diabetes. Indeed. So you began to try this protocol with your patients. So what did you do? You stopped the medication and you changed their diet. I think what I did first was ask them how they felt about it. This was in 2013. And there was a group, I went on the low carb diet with my patients. So I was learning with my patients. We started with 18 and we used to meet every Monday night. And I was learning with them the idea that what could you eat instead of bread, instead of rice. And so we started substituting really lots of green veg instead. Of, so we were turning the white stuff green, basically. So we're eating lots of green veg with our fish, with our steak, uh, whatever instead of the starchy carbs. And what surprised me was how rapidly those blood sugars dropped. And then the patients didn't need the medication. Uh, and uh, I was able to progressively stop the drugs uh, as the months went by. Indeed. How many patients would you say uh, you've helped to lose weight and possibly even reverse their diabetes? Are we looking at sort of 10, 15, 20? What sort of numbers? No. Well, the weight loss, I've got I've got data now on 336. So there are 336 of my patients who on average now, their average weight loss is 11 kilos. Remarkable. The best weight loss we've had is amazing. A young man and he's lost 10 stone. Well, that is remarkable. Uh, of course, we've heard from the <laughs> former, we've heard from the former deputy leader of the Labour Party, Tom Watson, on this program. And I think he lost about eight stone again just by, by cutting the carbs. And, uh, and and not being afraid, apparently, of protein and natural fats. Yes, I, I'd agree. I think certainly so protein, that's the, I would say that's the core of, of, of any meal, really. It helps you grow and maintain muscle. And then healthy fats. There's increasing evidence now that even dairy fats are not as frightening as we thought. So that for many people, full fat dairy is back on the uh, menu. And certainly I was really careful to measure the cholesterol level of hundreds of my patients who went low carb and ate more butter and dairy and the cholesterols on average improved, which I was amazed. I was so surprised. Now, you have a forthcoming series with the Daily Mail newspaper. 
in which uh, you, you've stimulated and motivate this ar motivated this army of other GPs. Um, how <laughs> rapid has the take up been within the NHS of this approach? What's the reception like? Are you are you winning hearts and minds, David? We are. I think so, Mark. Yes, I think. Well, I was totally alone at the beginning. I was the only GP that I knew of in 2013. And we really we have hundreds now so that 2,700 GPs have done my learning module, my Royal College learning module. That's 2,700. So I, I think it's fair to say we do have hundreds of GPs now interested in helping their patients cut sugar and refined carbs and actually doing it. And some of them have been featured today in the Daily Mail and there's, there's more to come. Uh, full disclosure, David, I have read your diet plans and I basically gave up sugar and potatoes, rice and pasta, all that sort of stuff. Uh, I lost 18 <laughs> kilograms. I wasn't hungry wow. ever, which is amazing because with yes. the carbs, it's all about sort of the yo-yo and you get, you've got the yes. enormous amount of energy and then you get the crash. Um, however, just recently I tweeted about carbs being linked to obesity and I experienced amazing pushback from fans of carbs. And even the NHS official guidelines, the, the famous eat well advice, um, encourages us to eat about a third of our diet as carbohydrates. So, you know, the mixed messaging was certainly confusing for my listeners. It, it's really confusing. And so I, I think particularly for somebody with type 2 diabetes, I, I've struggled to understand how it can make sense to get a lot of your calories from carbohydrate, which at the end breaks down into sugar. And sugar, if you have type 2 diabetes, is the one thing you can't metabolize easily. You're far better metabolizing fat rather than sugar. The Eat Well Guide is said to be for the general population. And I think the confusion comes as to is, do we include the 4 million people with type 2 diabetes in the general population? Or are we going to advise something separate for them? And that has caused confusion. I feel that people with type 2 diabetes need to be particularly careful with sugar and refined carbs. Um, David, I need to get to the news, but you've got this series coming up in the Daily Mail newspaper. So can you tell me a bit about that? Oh, I can. So we're trying to make it easy for people. So uh, starting on Saturday, uh, this is the, the Daily Mail. So Saturday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, there are, is a free pullout with recipes, low carb recipes, easy recipes you can do at home. Uh, I'm so grateful Kate Caldesi has done that. Brilliant. Then during the week, I'm writing two or three articles per day on how to make low carb successful. And a, a quick mention for my lovely wife, Jen, who is a consultant psychologist, and she's featuring on Tuesday talking about carb addiction, which is our next interest. Make sure you get your copy of the Daily Mail newspaper on Saturday and all of next week. Uh, David, thanks very much for your time. Dr. David Unwin, uh, GP, a low carb pioneer. Uh, your thoughts on that? Have you tried to cut the carbs? I, I can tell you that somebody that spoke to Julia Hartley Brewer just a few days ago on this radio station, Michael Mosley, is a similar proponent of that approach. And uh, and it obviously works for lots of people. It did work for me. If it's not your thing, let me know why. 0344 499 1000. Lots more to come. After this, we'll get a preview of tomorrow's budget with our political panel. First up, the latest news headlines with Emily Rose Adams.